So a few days ago, I made a TikTok of a behind the scenes of a photo shoot I did, and it kind of blew up. And while it was blowing up, the number one most asked question was how to achieve this look. So obviously the look that I'm talking about is this. It's almost like a light beam of sorts. Um, but essentially that's what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be taking you guys through the steps of how to achieve this look. There was a lot of people that guessed on how to do it. And there was some people that were just straight up rude about it for like no reason. So just letting you guys know, if you come into my comment section with that negativity, I will probably block you because I'm not with that. Um, with that being said, let me show the rest of you who were nice about it, how to do this effect. Obviously you're going to need a couple of things, but all the things that you will need will be linked in the description below. So it'll be the first couple of links will be what you need. And then obviously the rest of my equipment will be linked down there as well in case you want to pick up the kind of gear that I have. So before we start this video, make sure to subscribe and like, it really does help this channel grow. And I appreciate every single one of you that does. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the video and let me break down how this effect is done. Now, a lot of people are probably guessing that I do a lot of the effects on my photos in post, which just isn't really true. Um, I try and nail as much in camera as possible because it makes it a lot easier when I'm editing. So all the effects that you saw with this light beam were done on set. The only thing I changed in post was a little bit of um, manipulation to the photo to make it look like the room was bigger um, or just some like, you know, basic color grading like I do with all my photos. But let me go ahead and just break down the equipment that you're going to need. So you're going to need three different things for this effect. The first is going to be a projector. I use the Epson Powerlight 84 plus. There's no specific reason on why I use it. Um, one reason I use it is because it's pretty bright. The higher the brightness of the light source, the more visible the beam is going to be. So don't be cheap and buy like the cheapest projector you can find because you want to have at least 2500 lumens because if you don't have that it's going to be really hard for the camera to actually see the light beam now you might be able to see it with your eye very clearly but cameras aren't as sensitive as your eyes um, for the most part unless you have like a really nice camera just make it easier on yourself get yourself a high power projector i'll have mine in the description below and i'll have a couple of others but if you already have a projector at home you are set. The second thing you're gonna need is a smoke machine. Obviously I talked about this in my last video, but the smoke is how you're gonna actually be able to see the light beam. The one I use is the DJ VF 1300 watt. I'll have the link in the description. You can get a cheaper one and I would recommend getting a cheaper one because if you do, it'll be a lot smaller and it won't take as long to heat up and you know stuff like that. But you don't really need to have the biggest, most powerful smoke machine. You just need a machine that's gonna be able to fill up the room with a nice haze so that you can actually see the light beam. And then the third thing you're going to need, this is what really completes the effect. Um, the third thing you're going to need is a magnifying sheet. Now this is the one I have is a three times magnifying sheet, but you can play around with it. Essentially all the magnifying sheet is doing is it's taking the light from the projector and condensing it and making it parallel instead of like going all over the place. And this is what's going to really drive that beam because it's concentrating all the light into a center point. And this is going to make the center point very, very bright. And that's how you're going to get that really cool beam effect. Let me show you guys how I usually set this up. So when I'm setting up the projector, I just pick a random spot that I think is going to look nice. And then I turn on the projector. And once the projector is turned on and is powering on, I like to fill up the room with smoke. You want to have a decent amount of smoke go in before you even start fiddling with the light beam itself because it's gonna be a lot easier to actually see the beam if there's smoke in the air. So once I set up the projector, I get the smoke going, I get the room nice and hazy. And when the room is nice and hazy and you can really start to see that beam form, that's when you can go ahead and get your magnifying sheet. So the way I like to do it is I get a spare tripod and I get a couple of clamps together. And essentially I just clamp the magnifying sheet on to the, one of the big clamps. And then I use another small clamp to just hold the big clamp onto the tripod. It's very, very basic, but it gets the job done. And essentially all you need is just something that can hold the magnifying sheet in front of the projector. Now, every magnifying sheet has two different sides. So play around with which side is going to actually get you the beam because one side is going to concentrate it into like a straight line and the other side is going to like concentrate it into a, a center point and then diffuse it again. So the side of the magnifying sheet that you use is going to make a big difference. So make sure you play around with that um, depending on whatever magnifying sheet you get. There are also different sized magnifying sheets. So the one I have is like a full page, but I'm pretty sure you can get away with using like one of the smaller ones. Um, and it doesn't have to be like super high quality either. You know, any magnifying sheet will work. Once everything is set up, you will see the beam and the beam is going to essentially, you know, 
it's, it's a light beam. Like it, it just looks cool. Um, once you have the beam set up, you can play around with where it's pointing and you can reflect it off of things. In my photo shoot, I reflected it off a mirror, um, but you kind of have to like play around with it and find the trajectory that's gonna work because if you just start bouncing it like everywhere, it's not really going to, uh, to look that flattering. So you have to be careful with it. Um, don't look right into it because it is a very highly concentrated light source. And if you do look into it, you're gonna get some like eye burns and potential, you know, eye damage, which I'm not liable for. So, you know, do at your own risk. I'm not telling you guys to go do this, you know, caution. But anyways, if you guys want to spice it up even more, you can also do what I do, which is hook up your laptop or any external device to your projector and project different colors. And this is going to allow you to change the color of the light beam. It's going to allow you to make the light beam like solid colors and like patterns and stuff like that. And it's just overall going to make the, the beam a lot more unique instead of just being like a powerful white beam. Um, you can have like different colors and you can just, you know, do a whole lot with it. And this is why I like projectors a little bit more than lights sometimes because with a standard light it would just be a solid light and you would be able to sure you could focus it but it would just be a solid light at the end of the day but with a projector you can change it to like whatever color you want so um yeah that's how you get the light beam so yeah that's how you make the light beam super super simple super easy and if you guys do try it out go ahead and tag me so i can kind of see what kind of photos you could get out of it be cautious with it, it you are playing with a very high concentrated uh, light source which can cause eye damage so which is you know, be responsible and don't ruin it for everyone. Go ahead and support me over at Patreon. Um, I've been lacking on the Patreon content this month because I've been super busy, but I'm picking up a second camera soon. And that means that every single photo shoot going forward with that second camera, I'm gonna be able to record behind the scenes and I'll be posting the entire behind the scenes footage on Patreon for my patrons to see. Another perk of being a patron is you will receive all of my preset packs for free as well as other goodies like downloadable content and stuff like that. So definitely consider going to my Patreon and becoming a patron and supporting me and this channel and my creative endeavors. If you guys like how my photos look, you can also go ahead and pick up my preset pack that recently launched over on my website. Link will be in the description below. While you're there, go ahead and pick up a print for yourself and check out some of my other items that I'm selling. So yeah, that about does it. Make sure to subscribe and like, um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, see ya.